Starbucks with the McDonald's somewhere in Wees Park. Outside of Beast Pack. Yeah, it's the S-B-E-C-H England. We had him. Can you throw the signature? I had a video burger. Can you wait for that? I'm gonna get back out here. Turn it on before. Outside, honey. Pretty McDonald's. Okay. And elderly people shot in there again. <laughs> Watch out for elderly people. <laughs> we are in the town of Oxford, England. Oxford. And we are hoping to go to Oxford University.
hold it like this. Jack's getting ready to go take a wee somewhere. Somewhere along the road here in England. Jack is actually taking a wee behind that tree if we can spot him. I need to go a little so I can see you. What? Jack is taking a seat maybe see a little bit of the red shirt behind there. He's taking a wee. Battery's going dead. Somehow the battery always goes dead, honey, when you're taken away. supposed to press a different button, honey. What do you mean, Sue? I'm letting it play into here. Oh, you're letting it play into there? Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Before Stonehenge was built thousands of years ago, the whole of Salisbury Plain was a forest of towering pines and slender hazels, where barefoot you trudged across the 
forest floor on springy moss and dead pine leaves, with brambles catching and clawing at your ankles. Can you look out in the way? Over centuries, the trees gave way, and the landscape changed to open downland. And now, you gain your first sight of an artist's impression of what's so good. Marker. You'll find it along the path to your right. which are timber post homes. They can only be seen during excavation. Then 4,000 years ago, some are only stumps now, but others still stand as once they all stood, all of them, and all from the same place, the Priscilla Mountains of Pembroke, South Wales, 360 kilometers away. They came from the mountains, dragged down to the sea, floated on huge rafts, and then were brought up the River Avon, finally overland to this very spot. Amazing. Especially when you realize that each stone weighs about five Soon. Oh, Jason, you're so creative. The bump you and that's all. I don't know. I just wanted to get the whole thing from the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me just listen to six one here. I 
suggest you stand on the grass near the marker to listen to the first part of this commentary. What you see before you is a ruin. Today, just about half of the original monument remains. Some stones have fallen down, others have been carried away to be used for building or to repair farm tracks. And over the centuries, tourists have added their damage too, calling in at the blacksmiths in Amesbury and hiring hammers to chip off a souvenir. Try to imagine it all those thousands of years ago. Imagine that you've been walking miles until, at last, you come to a clearing. What would you have seen then? An outer ring of upright stones set in a circle 30 meters across, each stone towering about 6 meters high. The whole circle topped by a continuous ring of lintels, those top pieces, shaped to fit on top of the pillars, and to curve in a giant circle. Inside the ring is another circle of different stones, shorter only by two meters, a horseshoe of blue stones. Inside them, another horseshoe made of five giant archways called phylophones. Amazing. But more amazing than that, there is not one Stonehenge here, but three. The Stonehenge today was the last one to be built, about 3,500 years ago. The first one has almost disappeared now, but from where you're standing, you can just see it. Look down to your right. The first henge was a circle 100 meters wide, formed by an open ditch, dug approximately two meters deep with an inner bank. You can see it just in front of you, leaving a clear center. Even to build such a huge ditch was a major achievement over 5,000 years ago. For, of course, they didn't have any steel spades or mechanical diggers in those days. It was all dug out by hand, using animal bones. Deer antlers were used as pickaxes to loosen the underlying chalk, and then the shoulder blades of cattle were used as shovels to clear away the soil. Now follow the path towards the next marker, number two. Excavations of the ditch have recovered antlers that were left behind deliberately, and it was by testing their age that we now know that the first henge was built over 50 centuries ago, about 3,100 BC. And that's where the mystery begins, for we haven't just found old bones here. Around the edge of the bank, we've also found holes, now known as Aubrey holes, named after the 17th century antiquarian John Aubrey, who found them in 1666. 56 of them, to be precise. What were they for? We know that these holes were dug to hold wooden posts, just as holes were later dug to hold the stone pillars you see today. That was the first stage, built about 5,000 years ago, of wooden posts circled by a bank and deep ditch. When you reach marker two, press number two on your keypad and then press the play button. But if you'd like to hear about the henge and the prehistoric landscape of Roundstone Henge, press number 11 and then the play button. Number 11. Hello, I'm Dr. Jeff Wainwright, Chief Archaeologist for English Heritage. And I'm... We're in the Netherlands, Holland, and Jack is complaining about how many countries he's taken me to in the last month and how he wants to stay home next weekend. But I instructed him that we'll probably go to Paris or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have big red so many times now. I'm going to travel. Life is a highway. You take the truck and go. Okay. As long as you can use coupons. The Airborne Museum.
go downtown.
that had a lot of history to it. camera honey. 